Hey guys, welcome back to Natural Born Critic, where today we go over my favorite games that need the HD treatment. Son of a... Alright guys, welcome back to Natural Born Critic. I'm Mike, and these are my top 10 games that I want to see get an HD sequel remake. Now some of these games you're seeing here uh, are games that didn't make the list, but there's so many great games I can't include them all. And I remember... Uh, back when Madden 98 came out, that my brother said, that's it, graphics aren't going to get any better than this. So, let's not ever listen to my brother. And before we get into the list, guys, let's please hit that like and subscribe button, and tap that bell icon to turn on notifications. Alright guys, let's get into it. Alright guys, coming in at number 10 is Luigi's Mansion for the Nintendo GameCube. This game came out in 2001, it was a launch title for the GameCube and it had great graphics at the time, and but it was criticized for being a little too short. In Luigi's Mansion, you explore the mansion and hunt down ghosts, and you have to solve puzzles and find keys to unlock new areas. You'll uh, find the ghosts with your flashlight and suck them up into your vacuum. I really enjoyed this game. I liked uh, searching the mansion and hunting down ghosts. I wish, though, that they could uh, work on the controls a little bit. There was only two control options, and it always felt like I never got really comfortable with either one. Uh, they are porting Luigi's Mansion over to the Nintendo 3DS, but obviously the 3DS is not HD. So come on Nintendo, please give us a new Luigi's Mansion Full HD on the Switch. My number 10. Coming in at number 9 is Heart of Darkness for the PlayStation 1 which came out in 1998. This is a cinematic platformer uh, by the same guy that did Another World where you play as Andy who's lost his dog to evil shadow dudes. Who were originally sent to kidnap you, but of course they can't do anything right and they captured your dog instead. The game had these great cinematic cutscenes and it reminded me a lot of Oddworld. From the gameplay right down to the difficulty, because this game is difficult. But don't worry, just like Oddworld you have unlimited lives to restart the same area over and over again. I'd love to see this game remade in HD so a whole new generation of kids can experience having their back broken by giant flying bats or a plant eating them or a snake dragging you into the water. I mean, nope. This game wasn't disturbing at all. So that's my number nine, Heart of Darkness. All right guys, next up is Mortal Kombat Shaolin Monks, which is a fighting action adventure game in the Mortal Kombat universe. You played as Liu Kang or Kung Lao, and you could play single player or cooperative. And there were some areas that were only accessible if you were in cooperative mode. This game came out for the original Xbox and PS2. The Mortal Kombat series has tried spin-offs like this before with uh, Mortal Kombat Sub-Zero Mythologies and uh, was it Special Forces with Jax. Uh, they were not very good, but this one was the first time they actually had some success with it. There was another game in development called Fire and Ice that followed Sub-Zero and Scorpion, but it was canceled due to deadlines being missed and it was over budget. Ed Boon has talked in the past about revisiting something like this a couple times. So come on, Ed, whether it's the sequel to Shaolin Monks or the Fire and Ice game we never got, make it happen. That's my number eight, Mortal Kombat Shaolin Monk. All right, guys, up next is Rampart, where you control and defend a set of castles from attacking ships. You have to place cannons inside your castle walls and stop the ships from coming ashore. And then you have to def uh, repair your castle, kind of like a Tetris-style game, and you'll have to surround your castle and your cannons before the time runs out. Rampart is an arcade port, and the original arcade controls used a trackball, which was a lot easier than the joystick or D-pad, because this game does get pretty difficult pretty fast. You see those little commie bastards there up on my castle up top? They uh, come off the boats when they get too close to shore, and they take over your castles. Tower defense games have come a long way since Rampart, and I'd love to see an HD remake of this game and see what fresh new ideas they could add. That's my number seven, Rampart. Next on our list is Crimson Skies High Road to Revenge, which is a first party game by Microsoft. It was for the original Xbox and came out in 2003. Crimson Skies is set in an alternate 1930s universe where flight is the main form of transportation. And the action and flight in this game is arcade style as opposed to like a flight simulator. When you're flying, you don't have to worry about intricate maneuvers. You can just fly and shoot shit. The single player campaign is pretty long and there's different planes you can unlock which each have different special weapons. 
The game definitely has a Indiana Jones type feel to it. In addition to the single player missions, there were races you could take part in and secrets you could find throughout the map. There was also multiplayer where you could dogfight human opponents on Xbox Live. Now, like I said, this game came out in 2003 and I haven't heard any talk of a possible sequel, but this game was kind of a cult classic. And there was even a book that was released that uh, gave you the backstory of the three main characters and a little more insight into the world of Crimson Skies, which I proudly own. Now, I'm not aware of any recent HD arcade style flight combat games. Maybe they're out there. But even if they are, I don't care. I want this game to get the HD sequel it deserves. My number six. All right, guys, coming in at number five is Metal Arms Glitch in the System, which was a multi-platform game that came out in 2003. It's a third-person action-adventure shooter game. And this game was overlooked at the time. It came out the holiday season of 2003, and some of the games that it competed with were I Ninja, Prince of Persia, Sands of Time, Beyond Good and Evil, Ratchet and Clank, Going Commando. So it had some tough competition in this genre. The story of Metal Arms is pretty forgettable. It's just a generic good versus evil. But the action in this game is not. It's, it's pretty intense. You uh, control some vehicles and there is some platforming elements. But this is a good third person shooter at its core. Uh, uh, the game is pretty humorous also. The uh, robots have plenty of attitude and funny one-liners. And Rip Torn, or at least a Rip Torn impersonators in the game, and he does a good job of sounding like Rip Torn. I highly doubt we'd ever see a sequel for this game since it was kind of overlooked when it came out. So the best I can hope for is pretty much the HD remastered treatment. But uh, yep, that's my number five, Metal Arms Glitching the System. All right guys, I'm not much of a racing fan in real life or in video games, but I really love Burnout 3 Takedown. It was the first time I played a Burnout game. I saw Burnout on, it might have been Burnout 2 I think, but I saw it on G4's arena and I saw crash mode on there and they were doing it competitively and I thought that man that game looks amazing I gotta try it so I got Burnout 3 me and my wife I uh, played the heck out of this game and I like everything about it I even like DJ Striker who most people found highly annoying it's very hot today it's like an SPF 99 day and I rubbed it all over my body it's burnout hot okay well maybe he is annoying but I don't care I love this game so much the sense of speed is in your face fast man it's even crazier when you have a full boost and you hit that boost. It's sometimes it's hard to keep the car on the road. You fill up your boost meter of a variety of ways by like taking down other cars or drifting. There's a number of vehicles and events to unlock. The vehicles are not licensed, but it's easy to see which uh, cars and trucks are supposed to be. And yes, I know there are two burnouts in HD. They just redid Burnout Paradise, which I didn't care. I didn't, I didn't care for, I didn't really like it that much. I didn't play it. I didn't like that the uh, crash mode wasn't its own separate mode you had to like drive up to a red light or some dumb shit i don't know uh and burnout revenge that's hd that was good uh, but i want to see burnout 3 takedown in hd let's remake this game striker and all let's have him back i'm sure he's free he ain't busy the last thing that i know he did was dangerous golf so that's my number four burnout three takedown all right guys coming at number three is war of the monsters which came out on the ps2 and it's available on the PlayStation Network, but the graphics aren't upgraded at all. It still looks like uh, dog shit. But in War of the Monsters, you control a monster, and you fight against one, two, or three opponents. And it's usually uh, a big city. And the destruction is pretty cool in this game. You can knock over buildings. You can topple buildings into a monster and uh, knock them out of the match. I would have liked to have seen some more variety in the attacks of the monsters. A lot of them felt pretty similar. The attacks were all the same. They all each had like a generic ranged attack. And they all had this like special where you pretty much just uh, spun around and pushed the monster away from you. You can also pick up items in this game and hit your, hit the monsters with them, or throw uh, like a radio tower and impale them. The game had like a 1950s drive-in movie feel to it. And I know there's some other monster games out there like uh, Godzilla Destroy All Monsters Melee, and Robot Alchemic Drive was a more of a mech simulator. And I, they were okay. I really like this game better. I, I would like to see this game uh, fix some of the problems that it had with the camera and more varieties in the monsters' uh, attacks. The monsters were cool themselves, uh, but that's my number three, War of the Monsters. All right, guys, our next game still looks so damn good. You don't really need an HD remake, but I just want to see it look that much better. It's Beautiful Joe. This game was released in 2003. It was part of the Capcom 5 for the GameCube. I think they were all GameCube games, uh, but it was later ported to the PS2. It's a 2D side scroller beat em up with some unique features. The idea of the game is you and your girlfriend are watching a movie and she gets taken into the movie and then you're taken in after and you try and save her. 
And because you're in a film strip, you have some like editor tools, which are called VFX powers, where you can speed up time and slow down time and uh, zoom in, which help, and all those things help you solve some of the game's puzzles. The VFX meter does drain over time, but you can extend that meter by uh, getting juice bottles. And listen, I really loved everything about Beautiful Joe, from the music to the variety and level design, uh, to the way they incorporated those VFX moves, which help you solve uh, some of the puzzles and, and fight bosses. Uh, that's my number two, Beautiful Joe. And the number one game is Super Mario Sunshine. I know a lot of people would rather see Super Mario Odyssey get an HD treatment, but uh, I'd like to finish this game one day. Uh, I haven't. I've tried multiple times to finish this game, and I can't. The camera and the controls are just so frustrating. And I've seen other videos on YouTube. The game looks great. I don't know what they're using, an emulator or they're using an upscaler. Uh, but when I play this game, my eyes immediately start to bleed. Okay, maybe that's a little too harsh. It doesn't look that bad. Uh, and the game did look phenomenal when it came out. There's so much to do in this game, uh, you can spend a lot of time just running around out of the, you know. And that open world hub was something new to me. I never played Super Mario 64 before. You know, I know, oh my god, he never played Super Mario 64. Uh, but I was playing the PS1 at the time. I was older, and I was too cool for Nintendo. But yeah, guys, I think if Nintendo brought this game back in HD, tweaked some of the problems with it, like the camera, I don't think there'd be any dispute about how great Super Mario Sunshine is. All right, guys, well, that's it. That's my list. And remember, these are just my games that I want to see remade in HD, whether it's an actual remake or a little bit of a quasi-sequel. And I'm sure there's games uh, that you guys disagree with or have uh, your favorites you want to see. Let me know down in the comments below. And I'm curious to see how many of you guys want Super Mario Odyssey versus Super Mario Sunshine. All right, guys, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoy. Uh, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.